this over here is the JQ J7, and it's the new kid on the block. Over the last week or so, since this car has launched, I posted a video about it. And there's a big balance between people that are super excited about this car and what it has to offer. And there's a lot more people that you can see that are, I will say, set in their ways that if something hasn't got a heritage of winning a Dakar, apparently, um, hasn't been around for the last 50 years within our country, a lot of people just push and shun something new away. But for me, something like this means so much more than just a new car launch. And let me tell you why. So if you look back a good couple of years ago, Hyundai and Kia came into the country to offer us value. And that value came in the fact that they were giving you a car that came at a good price and didn't come with a long list of optional extras because all the things that were extras on other cars was standard in those cars. And in the same way that they were greeted and welcomed into our country, is the same way that the newer cars launching right now are being perceived. The first thing that we say is they're cheap, they're never gonna last, they're gonna be expensive to repair, and by all means, there is possibilities that if big things go wrong, they do become expensive. Because cars are not cheap. But what they did, and looking at where they are now, they are just as well known as the brands that we previously put on a podium. And that's what I think Jayku, or where their story is starting right now. So this brand specifically, Jayku, is part of Cherry. Cherry's been around long. They've come into the country, they've left the country, they came back and they came back with a vengeance. And uh, if you look at the Cherry brand, considering a motor and considering Jayku, these are the luxury brands offered under the Cherry stable. So there will be a lot of similarities between what this offers and other vehicles within and under that umbrella. But the J7 over the last couple of days, just being able to drive this car and experience what it has to offer, I'm actually astounded by the fact that we sometimes think made in China seems like cheap and something that's not going to last. Yet, if you look on the back of something as, as an Apple product, yes, it's assembled in China, might not be made in China, but with that kind of legacy of a country that assembles and makes things, I think they do have an idea of exactly how to put things together. And in the same breath, I'm sure that they're not putting something together that's not going to last. Because, I mean, a car's not exactly cheap. So if you're coming into a country, placing a vehicle over here, you're not expecting it to fail. So, the J7, it's powered by a 1.6 liter turbo, seven speed dual clutch gearbox. This specific model is known as the Inferno. So the j J7 comes in three different models. It's the Vortex, which is the entry level, the Glacier, and the Inferno. The Inferno is the only one that has the all wheel drive system and uh, a heated steering wheel. It has this beautiful 19 inch alloys. The Vortex, of course, has 18. On the outside, LED headlights, PDC, as well as what they calling a 540 degree camera. Also, while you're driving, if you put in the indicator, the camera faces on the side that you're gonna be turning to be able to help you take a corner. All of that, fantastic to me in the initial stages. Somewhat distracting because there's this huge screen that changes to a car and then it goes away. But after time, you just start to get used to it that it becomes the norm. So yeah, as I said, a 1.6 litre tur turbo engine and the all-wheel drive system, I haven't really gotten an opportunity to be able to put it off-road apart from driving down the small gravel patch over here. And um, I don't think that I'm really wanting to do that right now, apart from being able to tell you exactly what this car is about. The gearbox, nice and seamless. And fuel consumption has been roughly in the region by like 12 and a half to 13 kilometers a liter. So it's not on the heavy side, it's probably in the region of what you would get in a Golf GTI. Um, and considering that this is an all-wheel drive car, where it has a few more moving parts, that's generally aided to a little bit of a higher fuel consumption. So whether it's an eco, normal or sport, you put your foot down, more than enough comfortability to be able to overtake. But you're probably wondering, apart from this looks, a lot of people are constantly saying that it has a little bit of a Range Rover look into it. And I think when we look at a Range Rover, we see premium, high quality, and it does look good. It really honestly do, does look good. I've seen a lot of people turn heads, a lot of people look at me when I pull up into a parking lot, and they think, what the heck is that? And they look at the badge and they're a little bit confused, but it's because the car just launched. So come take a look on the inside, how it looks in the Jayco. I love these handles. With keyless entry, you will see when you do walk away, these handles do retract, and when you get close, they come out, and the mirrors, of course, open. If you are set up 
the seat does move forward and back for easy access. But immediately climbing in, like just the quality of the door handles, everything just put together, the way that this design with the brushed aluminium, the soft touch, these two beautiful screens in the front of you that have, they just color, they just nice and colorful in front of you other than the norm of dials. And the steering wheel feels nicely placed and a decent size. I love the flat bottom as well as the buttons on the steering wheel. I will say for me, it might be a bit of nitpicking, but if you're going to be changing like the volume on the radio, for the most part, you probably as the driver are gonna be doing most of that. Unless you're gonna be asking your passenger to swipe down and providing that they swipe on the right side to be able to access the volume. That's of course how they're going to get to do that. The aircon also controlled through this beautiful 14 inch display over here. Everything is actually controlled, as I said, through the middle display over here. So from your aircon, to your radio, to all your settings on the car as well. So everything's controlled over there. In the middle, on this section over here, as everything is displayed quite nicely, your fuel consumption usage, the speed of the car, your lane keep assist, as well as with this lovely sensor that's in the front over here, monitoring your eye movement and if you are paying attention on the road. So uh, time and time again, you will probably get a beeping sound trying to assist you to either focus a little bit more or because we're in South Africa and our lines are not as greatly painted, um, the car's trying to find out exactly where it's supposed to be on the road. So uh, you can scroll through the menu, you can adjust this, you can put a map on the front, you can put another map over there for everyone else. You can even watch a movie if you would like on this big screen for the long road, if you've got a family that's uh, gonna be enjoying that along the way. Auto lights, auto wipers, start button, because it has keyless entry, I love this high gloss color, but, it is however a fingerprint magnet and that's the biggest problem. Glass plaque does look nice when it's wiped off, but as soon as it's uh, touched by us with our sticky fingers, unfortunately that uh, fades almost immediately. So down in the center over here, your gear lever, it really looks like a transformer's foot to me. Um, you have a mode switch, aircon controls, your demister, and that's of course to turn your radio on and off. Previously I did mention dual wireless, but no, it's only single wireless. It has a vent to be able to cool your, cool your phone down. Two bottle holders and where is my phone? It's somewhere. Can't find it right now. But it can fit in here if you need that little bit of space. The display, quite easily uh, accessible by both driver and passenger. And you will see, I'm not sure, but I'll probably insert the clip. There is LED lights all down and around this vehicle, so you can change it to whatever theme. So if you're feeling a little bit funky, turn it on to jump with the beat of the music. You can do that as well. Your steering wheel is height and reach adjustable as well, as well as this seat, seat which has lumbar support. Another thing that I do like is the rear view mirror. So it has this bit of a bench shape to it to allow you to be able to see a little bit more behind you other than just through the window. Like immediately when you do climb in, you feel the quality, you feel everything's well put together. If I close some, as you can see, it's even soft. It's, so I clip and leave, it falls down nice and soft. That is a sign of good quality. It's a sign that some extra thought has gone into something. Instead of just slapping something on and hoping for the best. Down on this side, it's a lovely armrest. There is some storage space down here, which I have a lot of things in. There's a cool glove compartment. And for uh, your friends that you are taking on test drives, that have other cars that do not have this car's feature, this right here is easy access for tissues. So you can put a small tissue box in underneath over here and you can have easy access to be able to pull out your tissues to give it to them while they're crying. And uh, missing out on all the lovely features that the Jayku has as standard. I will, I, I need to add, this is a fantastic place to be. Like I have enjoyed every little bit of being in this driver's seat. And I'm actually, I'm actually so sad and disappointed that I need to give back this car tomorrow. Because I feel like I can enjoy this car. It has an awesome sound system. It's a Sony sound system. There's so much clarity that when my daughter was driving with me, and it's songs that we normally listen to, she even pointed out that there's different sounds that she's hearing because of the clarity in the sound. And when you get in here, it's, it feels luxury. It feels luxurious. 
considering each and everything that is fitted in this car right now, why would you spend north of a million rand to get this? For the life of me, I do not know. I really do not know why we will spend that much money. And this review is actually starting to feel very, it's feeling like a serious reality check. Because we justify the more things that we get has to come with more, 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 more. We have to spend more and more to be able to get more. They are offering more for much less. And that's the one thing that fascinates me. The list of all the things that you're able to change on this car feels endless. And it feels like I'm rambling about so many things because the problem is there are already so many. Th there are, there's literally too many things to go over in a review. Otherwise, I'll be keeping you here for an hour. Now, I'm excited about this because it means that if there's a brand that offers you this much at this price point, and I think that's where my theme is. My theme is on that. The fact that we pay so much to get so much more, yet we need to be getting brands that let us ask that question as to why are we paying that much more for the things that come standard over here. And hopefully that will have a ripple effect across the industry that these types of things, as well as technology, trickles down into the less expensive cars. So yeah, that is not even all the things that's in the front. If I feel like I can open the boot either using the screen the button down at the bottom, my key, alternatively if all the doors are closed I can say hello Jaku and I can ask Jaku. Go ahead, I'm listening. Close the boot. Okay. I think it's overkill though. So let's move on to the back and you can see what's there. But climbing into the back of the JQ J7. Legroom, that's how I sit. I could definitely comfortably sit at the back over here. Um, you know, you've got your pocket holders at the back, USB-C, USB-A charging, beautiful Sony speakers. You have lights that travel on the inside of the door as well. This handles and this quality moves down into the back as well. Airbags all around, driver, passenger, side impact airbags. And then, of course, in this model with a panoramic roof, your uh, occupants also get the benefit of having a, something else to look at as well. So, at the back, also a very, very nice place to be. I, for one, do prefer there because I'm in control of a little bit of uh, everything, as well as have a little bit more toys to be able to mess with in the front over there. But, yeah, the leather seats on here feel nice and solid and soft. Not solid in a hardwood, but solid as in they feel very well. Um, the, the, the leather feels good. Um, legroom at the back, fantastic. You get your space in the doors, armrest in the middle. And yeah, even something as simple as a lever on the passenger side over there that uh, if you want to move that seat a little bit forward and back, the person at the back has the ability to move it. So that luxury is still echoed through the Jayco J7 right into the back over here. And another thing that they have added as well, which I haven't seen on a lot of cars, is on the inside of the door over here, if you are stationary and your blind spot detection picks up a car, there's an orange light that shines next to the door handle to inform your occupants at the back not to open the door. So one thing that does let this car down, I can say, is unfortunately the boot size because in its class it is rather small and very limiting with what you can put in there but there is a reason why come take a look uh, it is uh, sorry about that it is a little bit on the short side the reason why is down here silly me is a full-size spare wheel. So they've put a 19-inch wheel in this boot. And if that wheel wasn't here. Yep. So, just future Ryan over here. So I think my issue is that I am comparing this car's boot space to my car's boot space. So I drive a Renault Duster. And in its class, it has the largest boot space. This car, if you do look and compare to a lot of other cars, it might be on the smaller side. Roughly about, I think it's 415... Uh, liters of capacity and 
If you do remove that parcel tray cover, you get a lot more space. It's the height that's mainly the issue because that big spare wheel at the bottom of it does take up a significant portion of that boot space. But you can do with it. It's not like impossible to be able to use. So yeah, that's my problem. The measuring stick that I had. But back to the video. You would have a lot more boot space. So cool, there is some storage space on either side of here. There is some clips to be able to hang a few things if you have to hang like uh, grocery bags. There's a 12 volt socket. But for the life of me, I've been doing it in a lot of the previous videos, trying to lay in the back of this boot. But without this parcel cray cover, maybe I will, but I'll be quite high. However, the only way that I was able to fit in here was by flattening the seats. And I think this is the only letdown for me. Which is boot space. So, this parcel tray cover is removable. And if you do chuck the seats completely down, you get a nice flatted area to be able to load quite a bit. And it goes quite deep. But yeah, that is the boot space for me. It's the only thing that lets it down. So, what do I think? So you have watched up until this point and you're wondering, what are you going on about? What is your point? So, the worst thing that I feel that we can do is to write off a vehicle because something that we don't know and because it's something that's different. What I'm saying is, is that I think we need to give them a chance to be able to prove themselves. And you are right. Trust is earned. And I think that what we need to do is give them a time to be able to grow. And with time, we will see what comes of it. Because I don't think that any brand in their right mind will put in this much effort and add this much into a car and expect it to fail. It's showing us what the future of motoring may also look like in years to come for South Africa. So that's my wrap on the Jayco J7. If you would like to be able to see a driving video and see how the vehicle performs on the road, subscribe, press that like button, it takes one second of your time and I would appreciate it because it does help me continue doing this to be honest with you even though I'm doing this out of my pocket <laughs> but it's a passion of mine and um, yeah if there's anyone out there that would like to test drive the Jayco J7 the details for William Simpson Jayco Amoda is at the bottom in the description and until next time